Greetings, adventurers. My name is Kramer, and the weather has finally started to get nice, so I am out here in my ranger gear to show off this uh, build that I made. And I was actually so proud of this that I decided to make a video about it. Originally, I was just making it because I needed it for a prop, essentially, for another video I'm planning. This video would not have been made possible without the help of a Mr. Joe Howell of Joe's Outdoor Channel. He made this bow for me. And man, do I love it. So this thing is probably just over 36 inches. It pulls 35 pounds at a 20 inch draw. This is exactly what I was trying to make. Um, he saw the video of me trying to make a bow and went, I can probably do that uh, for you if you're interested. And I said, yeah, absolutely. So this, as far as I'm concerned, is a fairly accurate sort of replica of Aragorn's style ranger bow. And I, I just could not be more pleased. So. Uh, he made a video about how he made this specific bow. Like literally this bow is in the video and he shows us how he made it. And that video is chock full of awesome information. If you are trying to make bows, it was really helpful for me as I am continuing to try to learn how to make my own bows. Uh, like really interesting stuff about like using broken glass to help scrape the bow rather than using a knife. So highly recommend you check out the video. It is linked in the description. And if the sound quality for this video is good, it is because of my Patreon supporters. Uh, with their support, I was able to buy a better set um, of, of an external microphone, so I'm not having to use the shotgun mic when I'm here outside, uh, and I'm still able to get hopefully good audio quality. So the link to my Patreon is also down in the description if you'd like to help take my channel to the next level as well. And for everyone who's already supporting me, thank you so much. It really means a lot to me, truly. Um, you are helping me do what it is that I love to do. Well, so let me quickly break down how this works uh, just from this distance and then we'll get a little bit closer and I'll actually take it apart and then put it back together to show you how it's constructed because I didn't film the actual making process because I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, um, but because I'm happy with how it turned out and it's so easily deconstructible and the reconstructable, that is how we'll do this video. So this is modeled after two things. This is modeled after Aragorn's uh, bow and arrow kit that he wears in uh, the Fellowship of the Ring and then also in the Two Towers. It has the bow and it has the quiver. It is a small compact thing that you can carry around and it has all of your archery equipment on it. This is also based on uh, slightly how the Comanche would carry their bows as well with the actual bow case rather than just belting it on. So the quiver itself is made out of deer tanned cowhide. So that means that this is from a cow, but it's been tanned and processed to make it sort of feel as if it's a deer hide instead. And it is a soft quiver. Uh, if I were to if I were to take the arrows out here, uh, this bag is uh, formless, shapeless. It has no structure to it at all. And I did that on purpose because of a video that I saw on an archery channel called Pan Salts Caballeretos Military archery. I think I think that's what it is. It is linked down in the description. Um, and he's got a ton of videos ranging from Comanche style archery to HEMA to even modern firearms uh, training and that sort of stuff. I think his channel is really, really cool. And there's lots of stuff in there about uh, speed shooting and how the Comanche would shoot, which is what I'm trying to learn because it sort of fits my adventuring style. So both those channels will be linked down in the description. The soft quiver like this with the with the hide side on the inside, when it bends at a certain angle in accordance with your body and, and the way that the strap is situated, the friction actually keeps the arrows from coming out of the quiver. Uh, and I didn't want to have to deal with, I have a couple hard quivers and what happens is the heads uh, or the knocks, if we're talking about LARP arrows, will bounce around inside the quiver and make a lot of noise and potentially fall out because they're hitting a hard surface and then rebounding off of that leather because leather does stretch a little bit. But uh, as it's situated here on my back, if I sort of shift, neither the bow or the arrows are going to fall out of this thing. And that really pleases me. Uh, because it means that I'm able to move around a lot more efficiently without having to worry about my gear toppling all over the place because it's not working correctly. Uh, that also means that this quiver is going to be a little bit more quiet because it's essentially an arrow bag made out of leather. That presents a couple of problems. Now, if we look at Aragorn's quiver and, and bow prop from the Lord of the Rings, uh, it appears that his quiver is actually a solid quiver. It's got structure to it, and that allows him to belt other things onto it, uh, such as his bow. So he does not appear to at least consistently have a bow case. Um, in a lot of the figurines, the bow is depicted as just sort of being strapped on. You can't do that really with a soft quiver because the second you start uh, 
wrapping cords around the quiver, it loses its ability to hold as much stuff. And, and the arrows start becoming uh, very difficult to pull out because they're, they're too constricted because the structure of the uh, quiver isn't keeping the strapping at bay. It's just wrapping directly around the arrows essentially. So that means I had to create um, a bow case, which is removable, and we'll see that in a second, um, and attaches directly to the strap here. So that's just a slight difference between my quiver and Aragorn's quiver. And I'm okay with that because I'm not trying to like cosplay as Aragorn. I'm trying to take inspiration from him because he's one of the most iconic sort of fantasy rangers uh, and then make my own kit that works how I would like it to. So I have started improvising a lot of my builds. Um, I don't really sort of plan anything. I don't draw any sketches or designs and that that's just sort of how it is that I'm doing things. And it's a really good mental exercise and and just how well you sort of understand basic shapes and design. Uh, so I didn't plan this at all. Um, I looked at some pictures, tried to find historical precedent for what it was that I knew I wanted to do, looked at some pictures of Aragorn's kit to find inspiration from things that other people had already done, and this is sort of what I came up with on the fly. I just had some scrap leather uh, lying around, and I had some cords that I was able to use, and I just put this together, and I came up with the design mostly um, as I was doing it in real time. I didn't know if it was going to work. When I encountered a problem, I thought about um, what the problem was, what issues it caused, and then how I would mitigate those issues and then figure it out if there was a way that I could mitigate those issues with the materials that I had. So we'll hop over here onto the ground. I'm gonna take the quiver apart to show you how it is that everything is put together, how everything is laced. Uh, and then hopefully, if you're interested in trying to make something like this yourself, um, you will be equipped with the tools to do that. So welcome to the floor. We're gonna go ahead and take this apart. So. It, this is comprised of essentially three pieces. There is the strap that holds everything onto my body, there is the uh, bow case, and then there is the quiver itself. And everything is attached simply by lacing with leather thongs, which makes it really uh, convenient to take apart if something needs to be repaired. It makes it really easy to modify if something doesn't fit correctly. Um, if you have a longer bow or shorter arrows or something like that, all of that is adjustable. So the first thing here, on this strap I have uh, these these little sort of toggles almost, and this is a system that just continues throughout the entire thing. So I punch two holes and then I just thread some cord uh, or leather lace through that and then tie it off so I don't have to use buckles because I'm a poor ranger. And where am I gonna get buckles from? Eventually I might replace these laces with rawhide, uh, but just for demonstration purposes, these are gonna hold up, okay? So the bow case comes right off and there are these uh, two holes here in the center, which I just, uh, I sort of lined up where I wanted it to fit on the quiver. Just based on the length of the quiver, I knew where that was going to land. And then I just left those two holes open and left the two holes open here on the top so that I could tie those on later. And then everything else is just laced together. And I was experimenting with two different types of lacing here on this one. Uh, this is just a running stitch that goes through the leather. So in, out, in, out, in, out through both layers. And I find that that has a bit more uh, stiffness and rigidity, you see this portion that's that's laced like that doesn't really wanna bend as much as this other side, which it just immediately sort of flops over and this is a running stitch. I think the running stitch maybe looks a little bit nicer, have this sort of crisscross pattern, um, but I think that the uh, the running stitch is, is sturdier than the whip stitch for this. And so all I did to make this was take a piece of leather, lay it out, fold it over my bow, and then cut it out where one edge met the, the edge that needed to be cut. And then I just ended up with this shape. I punched holes through each edge, every one inch, and then I just laced it together and it makes this sort of taco and I, I laced the bottom as well. Lace on the bottom could probably be a little bit tighter so that the bow doesn't poke out the end of it, but uh, for now that holds on just fine. So the cool thing about uh, a soft quiver like this is not only as I talked about uh, with the friction when everything is pulling sort of on the arrows like this they're much less likely to fall out um, they, they still will if you try hard enough but it provides a lot more friction and a lot more uh, keeping ability than a hard quiver does so I like that a lot it conforms to your body it's very comfortable but it also means that the quiver itself is actually very adjustable so very similar to the um, the bow case all I did was 
take roughly eight to 10 arrows, which is how many I have at the moment. These are all modern arrows and they're falling apart, so I gotta get new ones. Um, lay them on a piece of leather, figure out, you know, sort of what rough circumference I needed, cut it out, punched a hole on each edge every one inch, and then laced everything together. And then I have this little cuff here up at the top. I could sew on more of a cuff that's a little bit longer. And that's kind of what Aragorn's quiver is where that can sort of fold up. It won't do it here because my arrows are too long, but with an extension, it would completely fold up over the uh, fletchings and over the knocks in order to keep everything more protected and keep everything more quiet. But right now I don't really need that. So I can fold this down. And because it's soft, what that means is if my arrows are shorter, uh, say I get much shorter arrows in the future or something like that, I can actually just not lace one inch, two inches up here at the top and then fold this down even more. And my quiver has an adjustable height for the length of arrow that I have, which I find uh, really cool because it means I'm not limited to one type of arrow. So if I were to take these out here, this is all it is. It's just this floppy thing. And the only place where there is stitching is here at the bottom. I put a slightly thicker piece of leather down there. Uh, it's the same type of leather that I used for the outside sole of my moccasins that I made um, because it's still supple and it's not going to bounce or anything, but I just didn't trust that uh, arrowheads, especially ones that were like bodkin points, which I'd like to make eventually, um, weren't going to poke through the deer tan. So that's why I put that little piece there. So the way that uh, this strap is attached is again with uh, two holes punched and then a leather thong that goes through it. So if I untie that right there, the piece that comes here over the front of my chest just lifts right off. And then if I were to take that thong out as well, the strap just comes completely free uh, and you're just left with this little leather sock essentially. And we can see right here uh, where that little extra bit of support was added. And then I just left this extra on the bottom. I could cut that off, I suppose, and have it look sort of nice and neat but I like the sort of rough, unfinished edges that I'm, that I'm leaving here along the seams. And so when I'm ready to put the strap back on, and this is good because it means I don't have to make a strap specifically for this. I could use this strap for whatever I wanted uh, still because all I did to it was punch holes on the ends, which I would need to do if I were gonna add buckles or chips or something like that eventually anyway. So I'm not dedicating this strap to this quiver necessarily. I'm using it because it's what I have. So. This just threads all the way through the length of the quiver. And then there's a tiny little gap here at the bottom where I can fish it out. And pull it through and then it just gets threaded right back on.
And I think that this is a very practical way for an adventurer to carry a bow uh, through the journey so that you're not having to like walk with it in your hand if it's like a big long war bow. This is a good size. And I mean, it's not gonna punch through armor. It's not gonna punch through chain mail or something like that. But 35 pounds um, at a draw weight with a, with a little piercing arrowhead, I don't see anyone lining up and volunteering to be shot by that because it's not gonna hurt. It, it is going to hurt. So it, it's, and it's, and it's, just about the right poundage for uh, legally hunting, at least in my area, small game, um, pretty much everything beneath deer. So as you just saw right there, it's very easy to sort of deploy the bow, bring it forward. and uh, get it strung up. I'm gonna have to drill that and practice it. And then uh, from here, you could use the arrows right here off of the back um, if you wanted to, but uh, something else that, I, that I've learned and uh, been practicing is if you sort of situate it right here, the mic's right there, so hopefully that wasn't too loud. Uh, now you have sort of a side quiver uh, instead and it's a little easier to maybe deploy one arrow, two arrows, um, whatever it is that you wanna be doing. And then everything just sort of packs up nice and easy. And it's all right if the, the there we go. And it's all right for me if the packing isn't as sort of expeditious as the deployment of the weapon, because theoretically, when you're done with the fight, it's not as important. Uh, speed isn't as important. You can sort of take your time, take the gear off, make sure everything is situated. It's getting it out quickly. That's sort of uh, the main thing here and this just sort of slips back up. Now, this is a short bow, but even still it sticks up and to the side and down to the side a lot more than I do just as a person. So getting through doorways, stuff like that is a little bit of an issue, which means that crawling through underbrush and stuff like that in a, in a dense forest is also potentially an issue. So even though this is mostly uh, for carrying and storage, especially on horseback probably, I'd probably choose to carry it uh, like this, I think, here slung over the shoulder, almost like a rifle, um, in order to keep everything out of the way, because I can control the point here, uh, and I can control the point in the back, uh, and then it's just very easy to take on and off. And if I wanted to sling it over my shoulder, I could. This setup is great because it is also compatible with wearing a backpack. Um, if you are an adventurer that chooses to use a backpack, even though they're not entirely historically accurate, um, what you would need to do is put the backpack on first and then put this on top over it. And the backpack I'm using here is actually uh, the Berg Snyder backpack. It comes in a couple of different colors. I've been testing it out. I really like it so far. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm wearing right now is Berg Snyder, actually, uh, the tunic and then my pants. So if you're interested in them, there's a link with a code in the description. It's gonna save you 10% on your purchase and it's gonna tell them that you like me, which is always very nice. So I'm gonna to continue to practice with this and perfect it as I am going. Um, but I, this really is kind of the perfect setup for me right now. It can carry enough arrows. I, I, don't, I don't know its max capacity, but it definitely fits at least 10, which is a decent amount. Uh, if you were just going on a short ranging journey, it keeps the bow, everything nice and out of the way. And I really don't feel like I need anything bigger or anything more. Um, you know, it's sort of, it might be fun to practice with a very large war bow or something like that. I'm gonna need this probably much more often than I would need uh, a, a war bow at 120 pounds just based on my context. Mm -hmm.